Welcome to Discovery. This is our first day inside the church building for indoor worship. So if you're joining us from the church building, then welcome back. And we know that others of you are joining us from home and you're watching this on your laptop computer. We welcome you as well. And I even know of some people who have a standing date to go get coffee and bagels from Panera and then they sit in their car and they watch this on their phone. So welcome to everyone, no matter where you're joining us for this time of worship. Last week, it was really, really good to have Marty and Tina Ganong with us. They have been missionaries to Africa for 25 years, and it was so good to spend time with them. Our church has supported them for many years. We recorded a skit, we recorded an interview. Both of those are available at our church website. So I hope you'll take time to go there and watch those. It's so important that we support them in the important ministry that they have. Today we're going to continue our message series called Jesus is More Than Enough. And during this series, we've been hoping that you will come face to face with the real Jesus and that you will discover that Jesus is more than enough for any challenge you might be facing in life. How many of you like a good thunderstorm? You know, I know some people that just love a good thunderstorm. They gather at a window so they can watch it or they stand in their garage to watch it. I also know that our big dog hates thunderstorms and he runs downstairs to his basement bunker because he thinks we are under attack every time he hears thunder. You know, I think a big factor in whether you enjoy the storm or hate the storm is the setting that you have when you view the storm. If I can watch the storm from my living room, then it can be very enjoyable. But the time that I was golfing and the storm came up quickly and I was at the hole that was farthest from the clubhouse, that wasn't so enjoyable. We were walking the course instead of riding in a cart. So I really didn't enjoy the storm from that setting. We got drenched as we tried to get back to the clubhouse. You know, thunderstorms can be scary, but they're not the only kind of storms that we face in our lives. There are other kinds of storms that often come into our lives without warning. You might think of a storm that hits your marriage or a storm that hits your career. You might be dealing with a financial storm or a health storm. And when these storms hit, it's real easy to feel like life is out of control. And we hate to feel out of control. We hate to feel powerless to change the situation. When life feels out of control, then it seems that worry and anxiety and fear, it seems that they always like to show up like uninvited guests. I can handle the thunderstorm much better if I'm viewing it from a safe place. And you know what? I can handle a life storm much better if I'm viewing it from a safe place. When I remember that I am not alone and that I am safe in the arms of Jesus, then the storm becomes much more manageable. When a major life storm hits your life, wouldn't it be great to be able to go to Jesus and say, Lord, this storm has hit my life. My life has become filled with worry and fear. I'd like to make an exchange with you. I'd like to give you my worry and my fear, and I'd like to have you give me your peace. Would you be okay with that exchange? And Jesus would say, I thought you'd never ask. When you find yourself in the middle of a life storm, remember that Jesus wants to calm your storm. Remember that you are not alone. Jesus is always right there with you. Today we're going to look at a story where the followers of Jesus were caught in a terrible storm. The setting for this story is that Jesus has been teaching all day to some large crowd, and now he's tired. He wants to get away, so he and his disciples get into a boat, and they go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They get in this boat in search of some peace and quiet, but then they get interrupted by this unexpected storm. Mark chapter 4, verse 36. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. 
Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Just picture that scene in your mind. A violent storm, Jesus speaks, and suddenly there is calm. Then he asks them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. I love this story because initially, his followers were terrified of the storm. But then after they see Jesus calm the storm, now they're terrified of Jesus. Who is this man? This is no ordinary man because he can calm the storms. Even the wind and the waves obey him. There is something much deeper happening here besides Jesus just making the wind and the rain stop. Jesus is proving that he is in complete control over all of creation and not just the weather. And that means that he can calm not just rainstorms, but he can calm spiritual storms and emotional storms and health storms and financial storms and relational storms. He is more than enough to calm any storm that you are facing. If you're willing to trust Jesus in the middle of your storm, then he will take your fear and he will replace it with his peace. So here is some important stuff to remember in the middle of a storm. First, remember that life is full of storms. When you choose to follow Jesus, that doesn't mean that storms won't come into your life. You're kidding yourself if you somehow believe that you deserve to go through life storm free. Maybe you think, you know, if I just try to do everything right, then maybe I can avoid all the storms of life. But that's just not true. Sometimes you're going to face a life storm because of a bad decision you've made. And there are other times when a storm's going to hit your life because of a bad decision somebody else made. The disciples were following Jesus, and what happens? In verse 37 it says, But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat. It began to fill with water. The storms that come into your life, they often hit without warning. How many of you can look back at your life and remember a life storm that came into your life without warning? Maybe the week was going along just fine, but you still remember where you were when you got that phone call that delivered the bad news. Or the day was supposed to be like any other day when you went to your doctor for a routine visit but then he, then he delivered the bad news to you. Jesus never promised any of us a storm-free life. In John 16, Jesus said, I have told you all this so that you can have peace in me. Here on earth, you're gonna have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Second, remember that Jesus is still in control. Whatever storm you're facing in your life, you need to remember that Jesus is always in control. In our story from Mark, the disciples were scared of this storm. They thought they were going to drown. Look at verse 39. <clears throat> when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was great calm. Jesus only had to speak three words. Silence. Be still. That shows us the power that Jesus has. He can bring peace to any situation and he can bring calm to any storm. In this scripture, Jesus was clearly speaking to the storm when he says, Silence, be still. But isn't it interesting to see the impact that those three words had on his disciples as well? The same power of Jesus that calmed the waves. It also calmed the hearts of his followers at that moment. 
So never forget that Jesus is Lord over every storm. No storm has ever caught Jesus by surprise. When the storm hits, Jesus is still in control. He's got this situation covered, and he's got you covered. Don't spend your time examining the size of the storm that you're dealing with. Instead, remember the size of the God that you worship. You worship a God who can speak and calm the storm. In Proverbs 10, it says, When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. So let me ask you this question. What is your foundation in the storm? You need to make sure that you have built your life on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. You don't start building your foundation after the storm hits. Instead, you need to be building it day after day after day so that it's firmly in place before the storm hits. And let's all remember this. Not every storm is going to be instantly calm. Not every storm is going to go away quickly. And it's in those times that we really need to believe in and lean into the promises of Jesus more than ever. In Hebrews 13, it says, For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. I know faithful believers in Jesus where their storm has not lasted one week or one month, but their storm has lasted for years, and yet they faithfully continue to serve their Lord and Savior. I have so much respect for those people. They cling to this promise in Hebrews. They remind themselves often that God will never fail them and never abandon them. Third, remember to reach out to Jesus during your storms. When a storm hits your life, what is often your first reaction? I don't know about you, but I think many of us try to take matters into our own hands and we try to fix things ourselves. There's a five letter word that can keep us from asking for help. Do you know what that word is? It's pride. Don't let pride keep you from reaching out for help. In this Bible story, we need to notice what the disciples did first. In verse 38, it says, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Think of how differently this story would have ended if that verse would have said, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat, so the disciples said, Let's not bother Jesus with our problems. Let's just let him sleep. I think we can handle this problem by ourselves. This story would have had a terrible ending if they had failed to reach out to Jesus. We can learn from these disciples because the first thing these disciples did is that they reached out to Jesus. And notice what they asked him. They said, don't you care that we're going to drown? And I'm guessing that many of you in your life storms have asked a similar question. Lord, don't you care that my loved one has cancer? Lord, don't you care that my parents got a divorce? Lord, don't you care that I just buried someone I love when they were way too young? Lord, don't you care? I'm in the middle of this storm. Why don't you just make it go away? God has given us permission to bring our questions and our frustrations to him. He's got big shoulders and he can handle it. And if you don't believe me, then go read through some of the Psalms and look at some of the questions and the frustrations that the Psalm writers pour out to God in these Psalms. No matter how deep you are into the storm you're in right now, and no matter how far away from God you might feel, you need to remember that you can always reach out to Jesus. It's never too late. And he promises that he will give you the strength 
and the courage and the peace that you need to make it through the storm. The Apostle Paul faced a lot of life storms as he followed Jesus. And during one of his life storms, he found himself sitting in a jail. And he wrote these words, Philippians 4, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And then you're going to experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. When I read that scripture, I see a pretty important exchange taking place. Lord, I'm coming to you today with all of my worries, and I'd like to give you my worries. And then, could you give me your peace? I don't know about you. But I like that exchange. Paul is not saying that your life is going to be storm free because he was sitting in a jail as he wrote this. But he is saying that God will give you the peace that you need in the midst of your storm. <clears throat> and then finally, remember that Jesus will be with you in your storms. Part of Satan's strategy is he wants to isolate you. And he wants you to believe that you are all by yourself as you face your life storm. But that's simply not true. Jesus has promised to be with you no matter what storm you are facing. And when you find yourself in the middle of a life storm, one of the best things you can do is to recall a life storm that you went through in the past and remember how Jesus was with you then and remember how Jesus helped you get through that storm. And you can be honest as you remember that that storm was not easy. But God was faithful to help you get through it. And when you can look back at all the times when God was with you in the past, it gives you assurance that he's going to be with you now during this present storm. In Psalm 77, the psalmist writes, But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. If you read this entire psalm, you see that the psalm writer was going through a time of struggle and he had a lot of questions for God. He was pouring his heart out to the Lord and then the turning point came for him in verse 11 when he said, but then I recall all you have done. And that's the best medicine that a doctor can prescribe. Remember all that God has done. Remember how God has shown his faithfulness to you in the past. When you remember how God has shown his faithfulness to you in the past, then that's going to give you peace during your present storm. You can make the exchange where you give your worries and cares to God, and then God gives you his peace. So let's jump ahead in the life of these believers. Jesus has died on the cross and God has raised him from the dead. Jesus has ascended into heaven and now the followers of Jesus have been given this mission of taking the gospel to all the nations. As they faithfully followed Jesus, they faced many, many storms of persecution. Some followers had been killed for faithfully following Jesus, but other followers still pressed on with their mission. They knew that God would be faithful in both life and in death. In the middle of these storms, they could recall God's faithfulness in the past. They remember that Jesus spoke to the storm. He said, silence, be still. And even the wind and the waves obeyed this man. Jesus was buried, but God showed his faithfulness in raising Jesus from the dead. Jesus had promised to be with them always as they faithfully carried out their mission. So yes, looking back and remembering God's faithfulness gave them peace and courage during their current storms. And the same can be true for all of us today. As we end this message, I want to remind you that memory can be a powerful thing. So what will you choose to remember? What will you choose to remember? Some people choose to remember all the people who have hurt them in the past. 
they relive these painful memories. They get all worked up again and they store bitterness in their heart. It's not a very productive thing to do. And yet many people choose to do that over and over again as they stir up bitter memories of an ex-spouse or an old boss. Please remember this. You always have a choice in what you choose to remember. You can say, today I choose to remember God's faithfulness. So here's your homework assignment. Take some time today to remember a time when you or your family went through a life storm. Maybe someone got really, really sick, or the bills were piling up, or your heart was broken in terrible grief. Remember that you were never alone during that storm. There may have been times when you felt like you couldn't take another step, but Jesus was, with, was there holding you up during that time. He calmed your storm. He replaced your worry with his peace, and he will do it again. I want to leave you with this final scripture. In John 14, Jesus said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that Jesus is more than enough for any storm that we might face in life. Lord, if we're honest, we all hit these times when worry and fear creep into our lives and we feel overwhelmed by the life storm. So remind us, Lord, often to look back at your faithfulness, to celebrate your faithfulness. You have been faithful in the past and you promise to be faithful in the future. So Lord, we worship you as the God who can calm each and every storm. We thank you that you are faithful in life. We thank you that you are faithful in death. And we ask now that you will give us the courage and the strength to be faithful servants. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.